بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو پی ایم ڈی سی آن لائن لیکچر روم دس از شہر یار قریشی ایسوسیٹ پروفیسر آف فزکس ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اے سیریز آف ٹو لیکچرس اباؤٹ چیپٹر 11 الیکٹروسٹیٹکس دا فرسٹ پارٹ is about electric flux and the second part is about Gauss's law because without knowing electric flux we cannot understand Gauss's law. Dear students, the electric flux, the word flux means to flow. We consider a flux of a vector field to be the flow of the field lines through an imaginary fixed area in the field. The electric flux is denoted by sine phi and the letter E represents the electric field. Electric flux is defined as the number of field lines that passes through the area placed in the field. Mathematically, the electric flux can be represented by the product of electric field lines E and vector area A, which is equal to E A cos theta. Note that electric flux has SI unit of Newton meter square per coulomb. This SI unit of electric flux is very important for the MCQs in final exams as well as in ETA exams. And it's proportional to the number of field lines that passes through some area A oriented perpendicular to the field. Now for detail, dear students, look at first diagram at the very left side of your screen. We can see clearly that vector area, the direction of the vector area and the direction of electric field lines is the same. So the angle between the electric field lines and the vector area is 0 degree. We know that cos 0 gives us 1 which is the maximum value. So electric flux would be maximum. And we can see clearly that all the field lines are passing through the vector area easily. Now look at the diagram at the very right side that the electric field lines are passing above and below the vector area and no line is passing through the vector area because the direction of the vector area and the field lines are perpendicular to each other and cos 90 gives us zero value so the electric flux would be zero and we can see that all the field lines are passing above and below the vector area and none of the line is passing through the vector area. Now dear students look at the diagram at the middle. This shows the orientation of uh, vector area. The angle between the electric field line and vector area may vary between the zero degree up to 360 degrees and the orientation of the vector area will give us the value of the electric flux. For Gauss's law these three conditions are very important to know. As you can see in the diagram 
we have a closed surface area which are distributed in a very small surface areas of tel A. Now at point 1, we can see that the direction of the vector area and direction of the electric field are the same. The angle between them is 0 and cos 0 gives us 1. Therefore, at point 2, you can see that the direction of the vector area A and the electric field is 90 degree and cos 90 gives us 0. So here flux would be 0. And now see point 3. At point 3 we can see that the vector area is directed opposite to the field lines which is making 180 degree and due to 180 degree cos 180 gives us minus 1 so electric flux would be negative here. By knowing the conditions of the electric flux now we are able to understand Gauss's law. Thank you very much. Dear students, this is second part of today's lecture, chapter 1, Electrostatics and we are going to discuss Gauss's law of electrostatic. Before starting Gauss's law, this is very important to know that if a charge point charge is outside a sphere, then you can see clearly from the diagram that the flux entering the surface is equal to flux leaving the surface. Then total flux will be zero because flux entering the surface is equal to flux leaving the surface. Actually, this is the basic concept of Gauss's law because Gauss's law only works for closed surface. If the surface is open, then total flux would be zero. Gauss's law states that the total flux through any closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by the surface. So there are two very important points in this statement. The important condition of the Gauss's law is closed surface and the second important condition is the total charge enclosed by that surface. Mathematically, Gauss's law is given by the total flux is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught. Dear students, remember we often refer to a closed surface used in the Gauss's law as a Gaussian surface. These are imaginary closed surfaces and there need not be any material object at the position of the surface. Now let us consider a closed surface and a point charge is placed in the middle of the closed surface. As we know earlier that the gauzes law depends upon the total flux and flux is equal to the product of electric field and vector area. 
we know that the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r square this would be equation number 2 and we also know that electric field intensity due to a single point charge is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r square by putting these two equations in equation number 1 we will get the total flux is equal to E that is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r square multiplied by area that is 4 pi r square by cutting 4 pi r square with 4 pi r square we will get the total flux which is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught which is the statement of Gauss's law that total flux passing through a closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times total charge enclosed by the surface. Now look at this situation. If we have many charges in an irregular surface area, then flux for Q1 would be Q1 by epsilon naught, flux 2 would be Q2 by epsilon naught, and so on flux n would be q n by epsilon naught. Now total flux would be equal to flux 1 plus flux 2 plus flux n. Sum of all the fluxes for all the charges. Then the total flux would be q 1 by epsilon naught plus q 2 by epsilon naught and up to so on q n by epsilon naught by taking 1 over epsilon naught common we will get sum of all the charges and we know that sum of all the charges is equal to capital Q a large charge so again the statement proves the Gauss's law which is the total flux passing through a closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught time total charge enclosed by the surface. Dear students, at the end of today's lecture, your assignment is to solve this very important application of Gauss's law. You have to find the electric field intensity due to infinite sheet of charge. Thank you very much.